Thank you very much for being there. I, first of all, must apologize for not having been able to make it to Helsinki. There were, there was a tropical storm in Valencia yesterday and I simply missed the connection. And in any case, I shall try and convey the message as clearly as possible. Today, we're going to discuss the optimal nutrition and physical activity interventions to support mobility in community dwelling older adults. And so there are words there like optimal nutrition, then physical activity, and then intervention that are important for the development of today's lecture. Uh, these are the authors of, of the paper. In the previous one, we simply had my name on, but I want to pay you uh, uh, tribute to the people who have done the work, like Paco Tarazona, who should be in the audience, Carmen Gomez Cabrera, and Fernando Villa. I have to disclose that the real life intervention that I shall be describing is supported by a company, a spin off company of the University of Valencia called Programa Mejora. The robustness study was supported by the Nestle Health Science, and that I have received uh, support. To, to attend the company, to, sorry, to attend the meeting from the Nestle Health Science, and uh, that I also have uh, to disclose that I am a member of the Scientific Advisory Board of a supplement company in Utah, United States, called Musk. This is what I'm going to discuss with you today. Uh, and I, the, as, I, as the story unfolds, I will be discussing the points one to six. The first one is that I want to put emphasis on is the human, human, and then economic F cost of disability. We have calculated in Programa Mejora that a robust old person needs a mere 900 euros a year. This is less than 50, or approximately 50 euros a month. But that a disabled person costs 14,000, over 14,000 euros to the society. To, for me, the most important is the human, the human importance, but also the economic importance. So we have to decrease frailty and disability as many of the geriatricians in the audience know, and this is a major point. The big problem is not to live many, many, many years. We live around, we can expect living around 85, 90 years. The maximum today is 110. We fall ill at around 70, 70. We start having problems 70, 75, and then we are until 85, deceased, and sometimes disabled. It would be much better to fall ill at 84 and die at 85. It would be ideal to live 110, which is, seems to be the maximum lifespan today for the human race. Uh, but it would be a disaster to live 110, but falling at, at 70 and be 30 years on a wheelchair. And, and this here is where we have to put emphasis in our efforts with the science we have today. Now I want to put also in the screen, two ideas that I have been developing or thinking of in the recent times. The first is the minimal nutrition. Minimal nutrition was developed in the uh, hundred years ago. There were, there were top scientists like Sir Frederick Goland Hopkins, who got the Nobel Prize and, and the motivation was for his the discovery of the growth stimulating vitamins. Sir, Sir Frederick, discovered vitamins that help the animal to grow. Today, we don't want just the person to grow, like in this uh, Leonardo da Vinci picture that you can admire, and the Le Uffici in Italy, in Firenze, but rather you want to grow, grow old. And for that, you have to have a special care in nutrition, to, and not only nutrition, also exercise, to avoid frailty and disability. But to 
improve your life. And for us scientists to know which are the interventions to improve your life quality, you have to have biomarkers. In the current issue of cell, there's this critical paper, biomarkers of aging for the identification and evaluation of longevity interventions. By the way, one of the senior authors is Dr. Luigi Ferrucci, who is in this session, and I want to congratulate him on these extraordinary papers. And for the young people in the audience, don't just copy the paper and save the PDF. Even don't just read the paper, please study this paper because there are definitions. There are many important points for, for those of us interested in aging. Now, the biomarkers, the group of, of authors um, describe molecular, physiological, uh, omic, physical, etc. We, we in the lab have been working in epigenomics, a lot on transcriptomics of aging, some proteomics, a lot on metabolomics. But today, now we're back to the physiological aspects. And I will be, I will not be giving you the transcriptomic details that would be very interesting from my point point of view as a physiologist, although I am also a physician, but rather the physiological advances, many of which we get from by digital means with cooperation with private enterprises here in Valencia that are very interested in this field. So with this background, I just want to move to the idea that exercise is a drug. This is something we developed years ago. And in fact, I sent a paper, Exercise Acts as a Drug, to, the, to, to one of the most reputed pharmacological journals. And this is the British Journal of Pharmacology. And it was fairly easily accepted. The, the pharmacologists accept that the exercise can and should be considered as a drug. And the follow-up was, uh, that, that it is the pharmacological properties of physical exercise in the elderly, not, not to anyone, but, but especially to the old persons. Uh, uh, and there were the dosing of exercise, this adaptation, the contraindication, ex interactions, etc. I will not dwell into this in, in any more um, uh, uh, details, but I want you to realize that uh, it, that exercise is of such an importance that you have to consider it, it as a drug. Now, as another point is malnutrition. Malnutrition is frequent in old persons. Geriatricians in the audience know that, but I want you to go out to the public because you are you, you are very important and let them know that it is very easy that their father, mother, grandmother are uh, malnourished. Malnutrition is very frequent. I just bring forward this paper from Singapore uh, showing that malnutrition is, 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 is frequent and, and it leads to frailty. I also want you to uh, remember the idea that my good old friend and mentor Bruce Ames in Berkeley, California, who came with the idea that of the triage triage theory of aging, uh, he, he says that because following Sir Peter Medawar, the idea of the antagonistic pleiotropy, the, that, that if you don't take an optimal amount of vitamins and minerals, and he has recorded that there are not, that there are very frequent, mild deficiencies in these vitamins, then the, the, the organism, the uses those vitamins for what is an old idea of development, growth, and, and they live aging, aging as a second possibility, and it's not, you're not going to age well. So do we, have, we have to have an optimal, and again optimal nutrition, amount of proteins, but not also proteins, but also vitamins and minerals. And this is something I want you to take into account that, that it is more and more important to realize. Do we have interventions? Can we do something specific or just say, okay, you have to eat well, uh, you have to exercise nicely, the walk? No. Uh, a, a few years ago, with Paco Tarazona, who, as I said, should be in the audience. I cannot see you, Paco. Uh, we developed 
this clinical trial and, and was a multi-component exercise that, that is multi-component and it was personalized and, and Dr. Tarazona was very instrumental in developing the, the, the program and it has to be social. It's better together, not just go home and do the exercise. No, come to a center and do the exercise. Further on, we also with Paco Tarazona, Fernando Millán, eh, Carmen Gómez, etc., developed the real life. So we repeated it, and we have repeated it through the company Programa Mejora to, uh, in real life. And what are the results? The results, uh, exercise improved the Bartel and Lot on scales. Mm -hmm. Real life exercise significantly lowers frailty, both in the clinical trial and now in real life. And the changes are very significant. But more, more important and more impressive for me that I did not expect the number of visits to the primary care center by the people who did perform exercise was significantly, but, but very significantly lower than with exercise. We have testimony, testimonies of persons saying how well they were feeling, but I just wanted to show you not only the number of visits, but also the number of visits to the emergent boards. We are now measuring, calculating, the actual spends that each of these individuals before exercise and after exercise, and I hope to have the results soon. Then came nutrition, and we need nutrition because, as I said, there's little use of performing a lot of exercise if the patient is undernourished. And we developed together with our friends in Nestle, developed this robustness study in which we not only have people exercising, but also they, they, we give them, and this is community dwelling, it's not in hospital, uh, we, we gave them a protein, vitamin, and mineral supplement. This is the participant flow, by the way, you have the slides and I'll be very pleased if you even care of having a look of this data. Uh, the fat mass is significantly improved with the intervention with exercise and nutrition. Uh, the lean mass is significantly increased. The mini nutritional assessment tells us that people who, all people who exercise and take the supplement are significantly better than those who don't. There are vitamins that are, that are better, that, that, whose level are closer to the ideal like vitamin D or folic acid. Of course, in six months, by the way, the, the intervention is six months and then one year. You, you don't, we don't see big changes in the general parameters because to begin with, people were not severely malnourished. We were looking for people who are aged, but with a malnutrition, but not severe malnutrition. And of course, we did not see big changes. We saw changes in vitamins, as I said. We did not see biochemical changes, but the cognitive changes were significant. People who took the supplement, the protein and vitamin supplement plus exercise did not lose cognition as, as measured by the mini mental, but also by other. And the perception of quality of life was significantly improved at, when compared to the controls. Very important for the geriatricians, the number of falls is very, very significantly lower in people who take exercise plus supplement or even supplement alone when compared with the controls without supplement. And this shows that nutrition is critical to prevent falls. And it is much more effective if you also have uh, exercise and nutrition plus exercise, exercise being personalized, ideally social and multi-component, not just walking, you have to have a multi-component. I don't have time today to discuss the peculiarities of the exercise program, but these are very important. The following, the, the, the lowering of the falls is something that you, the geriatricians, will appreciate, I hope. Of course, the, the, when we take supplements, 
when compared to contours, the individuals are very significantly less frail, and therefore they, they escape from the path to disability. And this is something, as I showed in my first slides, and I took some time to discuss those slides because they are very important for us to realize that uh, this Linda Fried criteria showing less the frailty when people take an, uh, both exercise and vitamin protein supplements. This is very important uh, to lower the number of people who end up being disabled. Uh, and finally, a few words to conclude. A few years ago, we, we, we wrote this scheme, which was published in a specialized journal on free radicals. You may have not seen it. But I just wanted to tell you that the, something that you geriatricians know very well, it is not so important to treat one given disease as to, because if you don't have diabetes, you're going to have hypertension, cancer, as to prevent the transition from all robust to all frail. What is in this physical biology and medicine paper says exercise, nutrition, and stress prevention. I only later realized in the, in the real life interventions that it is very difficult, and, and I followed a little bit the path that Bruce Ames has also mentioned. It is very difficult just with nutrition in community dwelling people who are not as well controlled as those who are in hospitals to have the optimal nutrition. Minimal maybe, but we want optimal nutrition without supplements. I am not saying that we should all take supplements. I say that we should bear in mind that we may need 